Did I tell you how an ex retaliated by eating my pet fish? What? I don't like that. <laughs> the, it's the same like guy. That. It's the same roast beef guy, actually. When we Is broke up. in prison? Like, what's going well, on? Well, he's a do? really I successful don't guy. I how every week there's some new horrifying thing. It, <laughs> and she's like, did I tell you? And we... <laughs> I'm and sure we I think she did. We go, she's like, did I tell you? And we're like, probably. Yeah. but And then but, it's never. <laughs> this show is sponsored by BetterHelp. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash trash Tuesday. What up, slugs? I am on the road. I'm so excited. I will be next in Denver, Colorado, February 17th and 18th or whatever that weekend is. My website is weird right now. My next Annie Wood and Friends. Last night was so fun. Um, my next one is... I think February 20. I cannot read these dates. I don't know what is wrong with my website. I'll also be in Vancouver. Um, and then in March, I'll be in Fort Worth, Texas. I'll be in Albuquerque, New Mexico, which I can't wait to go to, Washington, D.C. And then I reschedule Jacksonville for the end of June. Go to AnnieLetterman.com slash shows. Can't wait to see you. Hi, slugs. I have the most exciting news ever. Tickets for Drugstore June are on sale now for Los Angeles and New York. We are playing in select theaters only in those two cities starting February 23rd. We really want to sell those out so you can get pre-sale tickets at drugstorejune.com. And thank you so much to everyone who's already been supporting the film. I can't wait for you to see all the cameos that are not in the trailer. And I don't want anyone to spoil it for you. And then we'll be opening, expanding nationwide March 1st, but New York and LA. Get your tickets now at drugstorejune.com. And then this Friday, Friday, this very Friday, I will be in Portland. That's right. We had to reschedule because you guys had an ice storm and you kept messaging me. Is the ice storm going to affect the show? I was like, I no, we don't have ice storms. We do. And they're in Portland. Friday, February 2nd, I will see you guys at the Aladdin Theater. Get tickets at estheronice.com. Sluggy sluggies. We're so excited. We're doing our second live show. We had so much fun at the last Trash Tuesday Live. It was, I mean, the Lord wants us to have a live show. I know. The Lord hands us everything. We're going to be in Los Angeles at the Regent Theater, February 13th. Get your tickets at the link below. We have a lot of fun stuff planned and we cannot wait to see you guys. And we can't wait for you to show up with your interesting lives that will take the show in very crazy places like if you weren't there last time you blew it I don't want to be too <laughs> shameful know, but like you really blew it and it was like unmatched uncrazy but this one is going to be even better um, we also have a VIP option where we just sit with you literally face to face and we just answer any question you have and it's so cute it's so intimate at Regent Theater January 13th February 13th I'm sorry Regent <laughs> Theater Feb 13 the day Next before year, Valentine's it's going to be one year from no, last it's in week two and... weeks don't <laughs> listen to these fools we'll see you guys there I know Benji loved to talk about that, how little my penis would be if I was a guy. But is his big? It's actually huge. Oh, that uh -huh. makes a lot of sense. <laughs> that explains the personality. I hate when people, I don't want to have, I don't, I like it when shitty people have small penises. Look, it makes me sad when shitty people have big penises. It makes me sad I don't when know. shitty people have a small penis because then you know that's why they're shitty. But there's a reason then. When, when people come in just already fully stacked, and then they are terrible to the world. I've never met a big penis attached to a man that I go, this is a great man. <laughs> I really haven't. Hot take. I've had, I've had monsters with monster <laughs> and I've had like painfully nice loser guys with big, you know what I mean? Where their energy just sucked and they didn't know how to own them. There was never like a medium ground where- Really? You just need a regular size penis. Speaking of big penises, I saw my ex this weekend. <laughs> my exes. I'm so excited to talk to you guys about this. So I went to Austin. I had the most healing trip of my life. That's right. I spent quality time with two ex-boyfriends and it was like incredible. Did you go into a $3.1 million condo? No, I didn't. You didn't go? I did not go to his place. No, I, w so I went to- I feel like as a pregnant woman, this would be the safest time well, to go to an ex's home. That's when they want to have sex with you the most, I would think, because then they know they can't get you pregnant. Oh, that is true. So it's that's not safe. Point. No, everything, like, okay, so, um, 
it probably the episode probably came out last night, but I did kill Tony, which so I saw Tony and Red Band, who for years I've been seeing like people will send me on Reddit, Esther f Tony, Esther f Red, and I'm like, yeah, they were my boyfriends for a year. Of course I did. And it was just so... It makes it sound like you had like a Kalila relationship with them where they were your boyfriends at the same time. No, no, no. <laughs> <laughs> I love how we call it a Kalila relationship, but that's not wrong. Out of the three of us. Out yeah, of the yeah. three of us, you're that the one. Not at the same accurate. time. <laughs> but I saw them and it was like, okay, it, I, it was, there was just something healing about it. Like we all, we talked so much about our past together and like they have gotten so colossally successful. So basically- It's if you, wild, If yeah. you don't know, my two exes started after, literally right after we all broke up at different times, they started a podcast together and it's like one of the biggest, like in the last six to eight months, it has become- ginormous it used to be called kill esther but then they forgave her <laughs> <laughs> wait they um, sold out two madison square gardens and it's also incredible. really nice to know that now that they're both so rich and i'm still like i'm really glad with whose semen is inside of me still. well now you can kind of own the relationships more that now that they're doing so well what do you mean own them more now? Well, now you can be like, you don't have to be like, we're not going to talk about this right now. No, I've always been like, I've always had a, it's always been positive, but I feel like it's the most positive now. I think as I hadn't seen them in so long and I'm pregnant and it was just really fun to like see how successful they've become. And I feel so proud of them. Like I talked about this a little bit on Kill Tony, but like when I met Tony, he was cashing his checks at a check cashing place. <laughs> and when I found that out- He was working out, there, he was cashing checks for everyone. <laughs> when I found that out, I f like I went full Karen because he was paying like a high percentage of every check just to a check cashing place. I freaked out. I took him to Chase Bank. I, I go, Tony, why don't you have a bank account? He's like, they won't give me an account. Banks were denying him a bank account. I, I walked him into Chase Bank. I'm like, you give this man an account and they're fighting me. They're telling me no. And I did not leave the bank until they gave him an account. I still don't know what his shady history is that they wouldn't do it without me fighting. But You didn't even know what you were fighting for, Esther. <laughs> <laughs> I almost feel, maybe it's a pregnancy. I just feel this maternal thing where like I got him his first bank account. He's still using it. He's selling out Madison Square Garden now. It just was like this beautiful moment. And just to see Brian Redman like, have such a huge success but he he was always successful like he literally co-created or he started the joe rogan right. podcast but i'm not gonna say it like healed me that my other ex won't talk to me but it was <laughs> we're on our way <laughs> we're but that other ex is not selling out madison Square he's Garden. not you're yeah. right so the ones that count and the ones that help me promote my movie on their show that they, they they're good <laughs> wait I, this is a good topic the ones that count, I mean, I think all girls have a list of the ones where we want to talk about them. The ones we're like, no, let's bury that forever. The we will best never mention. Revenge is having them not count. How do we get there? Like, okay, so I had one guy. I'm you mean if they're if like such losers? Me. Well, it's not even that. It's like, so I had this boyfriend who um, cheated on me. And it was annoying. And he moved, then he moved annoying. to LA. It was, it was just like, it, it was annoying. It was annoying. It was like, I'm allergic to condoms. It was just like, you know, it's just like, this is annoying. Yeah. Um, but then years later, when I moved to LA, we like hung out again. And I made out with him once, but he was wearing his Invisalign. And I found that very disrespectful. Um, <laughs> that's right. That's right. <laughs> disgusting. But he was like, you know, I went to this Chinese medicine doctor and she really helped me like, realize like how what hor how horrible was what I did to you and I was like oh I wasn't like in love with you I don't care it was just annoying and that was like the best revenge of my life that is yeah because I was like what I was like don't waste your time I do I do wonder um because there are when people bring up certain people that I've dated and some of them I'm super dismissive about where I'm like oh he didn't count mm. and so there are those and I think everyone has a list of the counts and the and the don't count. That's actually so real. Like, I would never have him. I, I hope to God he never finds out that he doesn't, he, you know, he doesn't count. But like, there are some people where I'm like, oh, that was just an in-betweener. Yeah. I have like two that are coming to mind where I'm like, that wasn't like a real, I guess it was an early days situation ship, yeah. but I, it wasn't like a real. I know? can't imagine. Well, I mean, I had a lot of those, but I can't imagine. Like I, there's not one ex-boyfriend that I could imagine giving me a call and being like, I'm so sorry. Like, I don't give a shit yeah like they're all at this point situationships as far as i'm concerned i don't give a f about any of them i just there's something about i don't know what it is how i was 
brought up what what's wrong with me I love to like have a strong connection with an ex that is like so, but you have to be 100 million percent over them and it has to just be it just it was just this warmth that I felt talking to them and again maybe it's because I'm still like trying to fill this hole from my high school ex who blocked me on all channels but <laughs> There's just like this familial warmth there. It's it's different than friendship. It's, you know, we're not going to talk. We're not going to hang out. But like when I see you, I want it to be so warm and happy and like catch up, hear how your family is doing. I don't know. To me, that's just like the perfect ex relationship. And also it could, I was going to say like, oh, if they did something really bad, like maybe that's never possible. But with enough time, I, th I I'm just thinking like, I think anything is possible. Yeah. You hear that high school ex? I won't say your name out of respect, but I know where you work. <laughs> I know how many kids you have. Um, oh, he's got kids. Yeah. I did cute. I did a refresh deep dive on him when I was home for a couple <laughs> holidays. And my mom and dad did drive me past his house. And I said that once the movie comes out that's a little bit about him, I'm going to stop. That's yeah, that's it. The that's the period to the sentence. Yeah. yeah. You should get a billboard of the movie right outside his face. <laughs> you, I mean, obviously, yeah. I'm thinking that as well. I'll but you don't go by anymore, but he'll have to go by, drive by you. <laughs> um, I think that, like, what I have trouble, what I'm realizing now is that there are some people who are so adamantly against being friends with exes. And yeah. I think that has to come from their own like personal experiences. You know, I mean, everyone, everything, how we feel is really just a projection of what we've been through, right? Because there are people who are like, you know, absolutely not, that relationship should be dead. It's over, no friendship. And I wonder where that those hard and fast rules like come from. Being hurt, I would think. But I mean, it's like, you've been hurt. I've been hurt. But it's like, Todd's I... like a, no, don't be friends with the ex people. I I just don't want to be, I just really, I, I really think I've grown so much. And I, I think I had such unhealthy relationships because I was so unhealthy that it's like, I just don't even relate to who I was in those relationships. And I have no interest in revisiting that. I forgive that. And I give grace to that girl that I was. But I have no interest in having anything to do with that. But I think it, it, like we but have if to I had like agree. a job and we work to get like I wouldn't yeah. be, it wouldn't be like yeah it's not I'm like, not taking this job because it, but it's just like I don't I'm definitely not like seeking out an ex randomly yeah. it's more like if I see them I want I love that it's warm and happy yeah yeah but you're like to if I was seeking it out that would be like weird a little well I just don't I don't think I need like <laughs> like um. I don't know. I feel fulfilled with Todd. Like You've I just moved don't. On. Yeah, yeah, and I don't need like closure. Doesn't come from another person. I really don't believe it comes from another person. It's Thank like, you. From within yourself. Yeah. The thing yes. I've said to my sister three thousand times while last... driving by your ex boyfriend's <laughs> house and livid, he won't just peek out the. Say that louder, Annie. You get like, cl closure from yourself yeah. only. And I, even though I'm a, I'm sorry, I'm a hypocrite because my sister has been saying like, I just want closure. I just want this last conversation with this guy. And I'm like, you get closure only from yourself. But then now I have a friend breakup going on in my life that I am spinning and wanting closure from. So I do understand it. But I keep telling myself there's no last conversation that's going to, like, give me the answers. Like, I have to find it within. And it is, I will admit, What do you really need hard. me to say? <laughs> <laughs> Annie, <laughs> let's, let's have it right here, right now. <gasps> yeah, because I think that um, it can be two things. It's really that that person could say something that could offer you some further under understanding of why they acted the way they did. Or you're really just like, because with some people, you'll never get that. It's not in their wheelhouse to even want you to understand. And they don't even know. They don't know. It's they just a They also lost just cause. might not like you. It's true. They also just might not want to face what they did or said and the easiest way to do that is to hide I don't know I mean what, what what is your advice for me that I'm like I'm pissed I think about it more than I'd like to and it's not healthy for me to be pregnant and thinking about this like person who I feel like effed me over what is your advice because I you know all I want to do is call this person and be like you did this I heard this. You did this. You're saying this. Like, that's scary. I don't like that. Like, I want to say all these things. Once you cut the cord, like, you cut a cord, and then it really doesn't matter what they say because you have nothing to do with them. Have you already done those things? Have you, have you already confronted that no. you've done this? So I think that 
if what's bugging you is that you haven't said that. I don't think you're yearning for the conversation. It's just that you're yearning to get that off your chest. Yeah, I am. To feel heard. Yeah. Do you have to see this person? No, I don't actually. I mean, every time you think about that person, I would just be thinking about how exciting it is that you're having a daughter and how much fun you're going to have with your kid and just focus your energy on positive because who cares? It's like you're what you're wanting to do is you're wanting to control the narrative of this friend breakup or whatever, and you're mad if they're talking shit on you. But it's like, if I think I know who you're talking about, I <laughs> promise you it really doesn't matter what you they do. say because they're. it's so sad you were friends with them to begin with. <laughs> but And it's really time, I think, to kind of move on from the low vibe energy. Energy and it you is were when you you block you literally blocked I, I, three I, years I like, ago. You were I, ahead of the game. What is wrong with me? I you're distracting yourself. Just be happy. Yes, you I have, have so been, much to be happy about, and you're used to not being happy. So you're like you have a pattern of like being upset about something, or you had him be upset, and you're watching him be upset, and he's entertaining <laughs> you. So he is like a negative thing that you were like poking, and it was funny. You would like. I can guarantee you, it's only gonna amuse him and feed something in him that you come to him it's in, just with sincerity. So easy. It's just so easy. It actually is not hard, Stella. It's literally a choice where you just go. I'm not gonna like let my brain upset. You could be obsessing over like creative things. Right. You're right. <laughs> no. You know what? It's a. It's intrusive thoughts. It's intrusive thoughts, and they're they're intrusive. <laughs> this is not a person that was supposed to be near us. Like, I want to feel bad, but I also don't because I'm just like, there's nothing to feel bad. You guys are right. Someone who would do these things, you guys are right about them. And I know. I would more evaluate who (laughs) you are to be, because that's what you have control over. Go, why why did I need this type of entertainment? Why couldn't I? I think habit. I think you get into a habit with someone and then they feel like a comfort and it's fun. Because there was a crew. There was a crew. (sighs) Yeah. And it's kind of the same pattern. No, I think that. One's a little more malicious. I just think that I want to look within and be like, why, what is missing from my life that I would have people in my life like that? And I'm going to look at it as like a gift that I wasn't able to end this relationship, this friendship. And thankfully they did. I have a genuine question for you, Esther. Are you trying to single white female me? Yes. How did you, who what? told you? <laughs> okay, I actually like almost feel bad admitting this. I think that this is my cycle. It's like I wanted, I, I had romantic feelings for you and now they've <laughs> shifted and I want to be you. Because this weekend I did not, so I went to Austin with Bobby and. Oh. Listen to this, listen to this, <laughs> listen closely. Okay. So I went to Austin with Bobby and I didn't realize who was also coming on that trip was none other than Kalila's whole crew at Tiger Belly, Gilbert and George. And so I ended up spending like basically 72 hours (laughs) as Kalila with Bobby, George and Gilbert. And I had the most fun (laughs) I've ever had. Like it was the best time. And all I kept thinking was like, this is Kalila's role. Like I was just like, I'm her now. This is it. I it fits so I fit in so seamlessly. This is perfect. And I'm so jealous. Like I can't believe that's your crew. It was so the dynamics were right just in every single way. The betrayal. That <laughs> makes <laughs> uh, no. Can I say something that makes me sad because I've spent time with them and I felt that same thing and I thought it was special. Like I thought I was special. You've like, been no. on the road with us. Yes. And it is really so sweet. It is so sweet, but I. Now I'm like, I guess that's how they are with everybody. <laughs> I'm like, well, you Gilbert is so both, funny. What, Gilbert, is, Gilbert, yeah. Gilbert um, is unbelievable. He's a Could you mastermind. circumcise Gilbert on Tiger Belly? Tiger Belly? No, I, but I've threatened for years. Oh, I really thought that happened. I was like, that is pretty gangster. That's pretty fun. <laughs> that's pretty fun. And his wife rules too. Gilbert's wife is the star of the entire family. She's and the I best. will take this moment to absolutely established myself as an original founding father of Tiger Belly. Why, you ask? I have receipts. How did Gilbert meet Kalila? Through my college friend, Jenna. How did Jenna meet Kalila? Through me. So my lawyers will be reaching out. I think I'm owed. I mean, this single white femaling is so deep. <laughs> I know. Like, it stems back from, like, so you see how she's I have. posturing? Be careful. You end up with a pump in your eye. <laughs> oh, that's right. That's a great movie, you guys. It's just basically a woman trying to become another woman. But there were initial like romantic feelings, right? 
kind of. I haven't or maybe, seen it in a while, but. I do remember that feeling of being like, wait, is she in love with her? And they're <sighs> just not saying it. I love, Bridget Fonda was, but she gave us so much. Esther, thank you for being my stand-in. It was really fun. Thank you for allowing it, honestly. I'm really, um, um, slightly threatened, but <laughs> you should also not be. <laughs> okay with it. But speaking of um, circumcision, I've completely changed my mind. So I grew up in a country, right, where if you're not circumcised, you're humiliated like your whole life. If you're an uncircumcised adult, they will call you this thing called pisot and you are undateable. Like you're just not a man. If and you're not circumcised. You're not circumcised. Similar to like, you know, I know like, um, I think it's Jewish, Filipino, what other, like Catholics, right? I genuinely think the idea of circumcising like my own son and chopping off a bit of his penis without consent really makes me sick. Like That's how did we get here? Is it was it because of religion? It's getting less and less common. Well, but they say it's still about 50-50, but that's call me a zookeeper, but I enjoy an anteater myself. <laughs> <laughs> oh. There's more. Yes. It's more dick. I've never Oh, wow. and can I've I never just see you? It's more skin, but it's rubbing. It's you don't no, have No, Julian, the parts can I just say have. this? Also, I know that you have a booty, <laughs> but it's not the same. <laughs> There's a rib. It's a whole thing. It's like fun to, yeah, it's fun. No, because um, I also think that it takes away the joy of masturbation. Because when you have, it's almost like having a built-in pocket p Because when you jerk off, when you have foreskin, you're just, the dick goes in and out of the foreskin. And when you blow them, it is so much easier. A little animal, you make a little animal balloon. You make a little balloon. You don't need lube to go back and forth on the shaft. You literally just use the foreskin. I, I like to make it like a little poodle tail. Like you like blow into it <laughs> and you like. I thought we were talking about your unborn son. This is really switched. <laughs> <laughs> right. Turn um, you do have to worry about that BV though, baby. You gotta like, clean that Fumunda cheese out. I. <gasps> Are you for sure like you would never circumcise because you're... No, I would do whatever. I don't... I was pro, but Dave was not pro. But you know, Annie, how you were talking about how um, the way you are born embeds into yeah. like yeah. your trauma and the the, your, the young life that yeah. you live. So I think pressure. that something must happen to the brain when you are... Hurt. Something is being... Yeah, when you are physically... Yeah. When a part of you is being physically removed. And especially in that part of your body. We don't remember yes. anything. What? Yes. Because it's we downloaded. You're born with a brain. It's it's taking Your brain, in all of your problems, like your problem with this guy right now and whatever your psychological issue is with this person. Yeah, it's from when break, I was It's from when you were circumcised <laughs> as a child. No, it's from when you were like under seven years old. Like your brain is like fully like, all of your like negative stories go into your brain before you're seven years old. Well, it does make sense that, because I did find out recently that basically when I was a baby, my dad, like, literally, I can't remember if we talked about this on here already, but, like, did nothing. So I'm wondering if there's some... He didn't, daddy didn't do skin to skin. I guess he did, but it's just my mom did, my mom is a person who does everything. And yeah. so I don't know if there's some weird, like, dad was there, but was just there my dad yeah my dad was like working all the time too but it's funny because I do remember when we were kids like if my mom went to go play racquetball my dad was the one at home we called it babysitting the dad was babysitting <laughs> us that's common yeah. yeah dad's babysitting tonight but it wasn't like mom's babysitting the rest of the time wait Annie how was New York I can't believe you went to it was New York fun this I was like sick though I was like I was just trying to keep it together the whole time. But it was really fun. But it was still really fun. But it was just like, I hate not being 100%. It's just so frustrating. I'm so yeah. like hyper and manic and I love being crazy. And it's just like. Did you eat anything fun or like. Get no, any? I couldn't really do it. I was like, <sighs> yeah. I stayed at Tim's place and Tribeca it was fun. But I, I'm starting to get really, really proud of myself that I am like so good at cultivating the best green room hangs on this f***ing earth. Like my shows that I book, like the Annie Wood and Friends and then this one I did with Bonnie, but it's like, I just like booked like all of my friends. It was me, Mark Norman, Tim, Dylan, Bonnie, and then- Did you stay with Tim? Mm-hmm. What was that like? It was fun. Staying it was with so a great. Friend. Okay. Yeah, I've stayed with Tim at two out of no three out of four of his houses. Okay. Yeah. I, I will check those boxes. And it's been when very fun. It's been very fun. I've I've just not had a reason to sleep over in LA, but we did. Uh, 
So we were in the green room and then Sean Patton was there and then Santino jumped, like dropped by. It was just like, it was just such good laughs. Just so many old stories. I had that like the week before Nate Bargatze was in town with Ari and it was like, just like, it's just so fun. These people that I came up with that are doing so well, it's just so amazing. Like Bargatze just posted a picture of him doing like this huge stadium or arena. I don't know the difference. And like Jimmy Fallon was bringing him. It's just like... I used to do Eastville open mics with them. You know, it's just very exciting and it's really fun and just really in my feels about it. And then last night I had an Annie Wood and Friends and it was um, Tim, Natasha, who's just a fucking angel. She's so beautiful. Kumail, who's like weirdly so... I'm like, Kumail, did you used to be fat? Like, I don't remember what you looked like before you had like a chiseled face. Does he still have um, the same... Um, ripped body yeah. or he's did so he lose ripped. it after he looks it's like a Kendall. no he's so ripped and I'm like were you fat like I'm like I don't remember what you looked at but I don't remember chiseled he wasn't even fat he was, he like, was just skinny. like not in shape and then like Marvel and then he it's so crazy I need to get him. and then it was like and then Whitney stopped by it's just like my shows people that aren't on Come stop. Like, it's just so fun. I've been thinking about this a lot. Like, that comedy clubs are such a good example of a third place, which, like, a third place is basically somewhere you can show up. You don't have to plan it, but, like, you might see people that you know. Mm -hmm. And because basically, like, maintaining adult friendships is really, really difficult, which I fully relate to. Like, you have to, like, make these plans, drive across town, whatever. And so... Sometimes they block you. What what you're talking about is, like, one of the most, like, fueling community building, like, brain empowering experiences is just like getting to be at this place where you don't know who's going to show up. You're going to have laughs. You're going to have fun. Like that is what I'm trying to manifest more into my life in 2024. Like that's going to make me feel good. That's going to be good for my health. It's, it's just going to, it's like, I think Oh, for a long time, like relationships and friendships were something I just didn't prioritize. And I'm like, no, I want to do what I will drive. I will show up like, cause that, what you're saying is magical. It's a drug. It's better than drugs. It's crazy. And it's like, and then on top of that, we're all like working on these new acts and these, and so it's like fun. We're like laughing. We're going over bits. It's just like, so it just was so fun. And I think like, if you don't have this job, right. And you don't have this sort of like social outing thing, it's like, Maybe you're on a bowling league or it's like sports or it's something that's like keeping you Even the you coffee like- shop. I go, that's a third place for me. Like I go there, the baristas know me, I know them. I think even like wherever you go to work out, like I'm not working out at home over, not on the list anymore. Like I need to go. I need to see people. I don't even care if I've never seen them before. I will be like... I will start. I'm like, I like your bag. What's up? Like, I think that's supposed to be one of the yeah. I'm like keys third to place like is Rite Aid for me. <laughs> What'd you say? A third place is Rite Aid for me. <laughs> <laughs> Donna, my girl, I love you. Um, it is a key to longevity. Yeah, is daily um, social interactions with people who aren't your close friends and family. Well, I told you my dad always says whenever I'm depressed, my dad's like, "Go talk to strangers." I'm like, "That's literally how I got molested." Thanks, Dad. But um, <laughs> but it, it he, we're just. I my guess family were extroverts. Me I see why you so, do yeah. that now. Yeah, because you like, always, whenever I'm out with you, I'm like, "Where did Annie go? Oh, she's 30 minutes deep into a conversation <laughs> at the register." And I'm I just like, "I thought people. we were hanging out," but I see the beauty in that now, and that's something that I don't lean towards. And I think this is part of like the pregnancy effect of like, there's just like a new sense of loneliness in me. And I, my theory is that it's like because I have the baby in me. I being alone is a lot scarier because like my body knows I need community to help me survive. And so I'm just prioritizing this experience that you're sharing for yeah, sure. And so fun. You hopefully it won't be with only my exes like it was this weekend. <laughs> I need others too. I can't believe you don't go to the apartment. <laughs> um I um I thought about you yesterday. I was like reading this um study on like um have you heard of the still faced mom? No, but and that's I, my mom. Yeah. So there's, I know. I'm like, it's resonating. Um. <laughs> I think Dr. Drew might have touched on it a little bit, but it's mm, basically I so, like, yeah, I, I think, I think he called it like second order representation, but bas- basically they do studies on, on, um, moms not reacting to their babies, like bids for attention in a way that the baby can understand. So like if they're like communicating with a flat affect rather than being animated, apparently it causes a lot of psychological problems for 
for babies I have them or then. children. And I thought about don't... your mom because your mom is very stoic. Yeah, it's like a finished thing. There's no there's no movement. There's no like the tone is always the same. She's like AI mom. Was your mom like this? A hundred percent. It's so really? annoying. Really? Really? Guys, my mom, it's the most <laughs> annoying thing. You know what I was like? I was remembering this bitch. Fucking, I remember like in high school, I'd be like, mom, do you want to like hang out this weekend? And she's like, oh, I'm going to the art museum with Max's girlfriend. And I'm like, can I go to the art museum? Why are you taking some other, like, it would be like, she would literally like show it to other people. But I'm telling you, it's because she's adopted and she has issues with like mother daughter relationship because she has issues with having been adopted. Was she like sort of like a flatter personality? She would look, she would look, she can be animated for other people. She would look. <laughs> At my, I'd be like, you're looking at my ear. She'd be like, <laughs> she'd be like, so. my eyes are over here. This show is sponsored by BetterHelp. I have benefited from therapy so much in my life, and I'm so excited we're talking today about Annie's therapy journey. Like, I'm just so excited for her because going deep with someone else and the, getting that other perspective is so important, and you just can't do it alone. It is to me just like drinking water. It is something that I cannot go without. It is something that I've acknowledged I absolutely need in my life and will continue to do. And if you're thinking of giving therapy a try, no better place to start than BetterHelp. It's entirely online, so it is designed to be convenient, flexible, and suited to your schedule. And it's super easy. You just fill out a brief questionnaire and they match you with a licensed therapist and you can switch therapists anytime. Because honestly, like, let's be real. Like, there have been times where I've gone into a consult and I'm like, I don't think this person and I are a match. And you can do that very easily with BetterHelp for no additional charge. Become your own soulmate, whether you're looking for one or not. Visit betterhelp.com slash trash Tuesday today to get 10% off your first month. That's betterhelp, H-E-L-P dot com slash trash Tuesday. Are these yeah, like, things that either of you felt? Um, do you feel as though your parent was aware of your emotions? I don't think they I had any time to so. deal with my emotions um, or care about my emotions. Were, hold on. Oh Did they God. recognize your expressions of emotion as an opportunity for intimacy and teaching? No. No, as an opportunity to be like, my daughter's broken. <laughs> Did they I'm, like, I'm just lactose intolerant. I, have to I, I would say that just like upped the ignore like channel. It's like, oh, it's she's doing more like we do less. Yeah. That's Okay, this one I for sure didn't get. Did they listen with empathy and validate your feelings? I love you guys, but no. <laughs> Did they help you learn to label your feelings no. with words? No. Are you fucking kidding this me? This is like Wait, It's calling me a selfish cunt labeling my feelings. I don't know. Actually, yeah. Actually. Yeah. I had to, guys, I'm doing EMDR. Am I saying it right? Isn't it so great? I haven't started that part yet. I just did the horrific timeline of traumatic events. Oh my God. Which I, I really do. I've done so much work on myself. And I am like, I'm over this or whatever. I'm like, there are stored and trapped emotions inside me. It was like, like my therapist is like a selfish cunt. I called him like, yes. Yeah, I guess when you say that, I hear it as a joke. Well, it's funny. Because it's funny. Now, but yeah. And because my parents, here's the thing. I did always, and she, my therapist pointed this out. She's like, she's like, you're, you did always feel loved though. I was like, yes. Cause they always like apologize. My parents never like silent treated me. You got apologized to too? They would, cause they were fucking, it was crazy what they would do. So then, but it would always, I would go up to my room and then they would come up and apologize. Cause my dad was like, my dad worked a lot on his anger, like a lot on his anger. He didn't work on it in the beginning of my life. He worked on it when I was like a teenager. So it's like, so I did get, but it was all, he was mad. He was overwhelmed from work. He would come home and he would take it out on us. He would just like, didn't want to hear kids, you know? And so, but, and obviously he felt selfish and that's why I was being called selfish. I feel like ignore was the bigger, like, yeah, I didn't tactic in my house. It was like, just kind of ignore. My in, tactic in my house was ignore until it gets too much. And then you just belt them and punch them. <laughs> okay. Okay. That it's also like, sounds like a joke, but isn't. <laughs> yeah. But it's like, no, punch your kids right in the mouth. These things that you're listing sound 
new. To me, like advanced parenting. It seems new, right? We didn't have Instagram with the little slides well, telling us. <laughs> this is more actually. What emotion, being emotionally available is. Like, <laughs> like I want to give my parents a break because, and I'll always, like, I always am so grateful to my dad because he was, he was beaten. He was beaten. He was beaten. He was beaten. And he never laid a hand on me. And so I'm always so grateful for that. He really did. Like, so he did break some part of, of that course. cycle. Of course. And he like, and he manned up and he did the work and he's so kind and so sweet now. And there's, I have no, I, I really like, I feel so lucky that my parents have like done all the work they've done because it's just not, it's not in my present. I accept my parents for what they're doing for me now. I think a big thing when I look back on, my upbringing and the grace that I give is that like I came out nothing like my mom and nothing like anyone in her family and probably realistically more like my dad and so I think she just at certain points did not know how to this was just so and especially she had already had my sister my sister was much like you know more calm and like them more prettier and, and prettier <laughs> yes we all know <laughs> skinnier prettier bigger boobs yes huge boobs. taller you forgot taller taller yeah <laughs> yeah um but so i also give grace and like i do feel oh. a lot of just i'm so grateful and i feel so close with my parents and i think any parent-child relationship is so complicated like I think about you and what you've shared on the show you've been so vulnerable like your parents age gap makes you uncomfortable mm -hmm. but it's still your dad and you still mm -hmm. love him and like that's such an a, a perfect example of how complicated it can be with a parent because it's we're programmed to love our parents we're not like that's asking a lot to be holding a grudge over you know they had like Dr. Spock was like the parenting book. There was like a book that there told you how to parent. Book. There was a book. And it was Star Trek themed? <laughs> it was Star Trek themed. It said, do this inside your daughter. Just kidding. Don't. Wait, uh, what's the last one? Because these are. It's famously, it was written by a man, but everyone says that the wife wrote about. Wait, what was the last thing on that list? Because this list is really resonant. Oh. oh, yeah. Set limits when you are helping your child to solve problems or deal with upsetting situations <laughs> appropriately. Well. Did you have they any? sure yanked me out of the closet when I was constipated and hiding because <laughs> it hurt to poop and said, Sh take a shit, you bitch. Um, <laughs> so I guess that was a limit. But also oh, there's yeah. a little bit of abuse. Like Todd, I'm always like to Todd's parents, I'm like, you like ignored him just enough. He's such a perfect man. Like they just did. I don't know what it was. Yeah, the but recipe so is so hard. It's hard to pinpoint what the recipe is. They just did the right. It was the right amount of laughing and the right amount of yelling and the right amount of like. I don't know what it was. Middle childing his ass. Because I look at Dave and he had such amazing, healthy parents, a great upbringing, and he's a great guy. But I know that part of what makes him a great guy is not just that healthy upbringing. It's that he had a really big nose and was made fun of. And that without that element, he wouldn't be Dave. Yeah. And that element makes him an amazing person. Yeah. And so it, the what is the recipe? I don't know. Because you need hardships, right? Like someone, you, you need some level of difficulty. Like they say, like for animals to thrive in any environment, you need um, medium disturbance, not too much and not too little. And that's literally how the strongest like animals like evolve it's you need some mid-level oh, okay. disturbance so i mm. think a sprinkle of trauma a sprinkle of bad things but mostly love feeling loved is like i think a great recipe i also have heard that if you don't have a traumatic childhood that's your traumatic thing like not having trauma also can read as like we got enough the therapy out there. We're, we're, we just have a lot. We're, uh, social media has made it a lot harder in a lot of ways, I think, because there's like beauty standards. There's like this sort of like. But what about the swipies? But there's the swipies. <laughs> there's the swipies and there's there's hearing other people's like experiences. Like there was. podcast, hello. Yeah, it's other people learning that other people's experience but even like think with parenting there's like so many parenting tiktoks there's so many like examples i yeah and they're so fucking overwhelming and i hate my algorithm right now i'm so impressed to hear that you literally went through the painful annoying ass work of laying out a timeline for a, like 
Well, she wanted me to do it as homework. And I said, if you ever want to meet again, <laughs> if you ever want to see me again, bitch, you will be right here with me. I'm like, I can't, I need an audience. <laughs> I need an audience. That's what I've been realizing too. It's like, with all these like writing projects I'm working on, it's like, I just, I'm done like shaming myself for not being someone that wants to sit and write by myself. I just don't want to do it. It's just, I'm a twin. I'm sick of trying to like reinvent how I learn and how I express myself. And I'm just like. Embrace who you are. Yes. It's like, I don't have fucking time to go. What am I going to go back to college? And it's just, it's, I, I like partners. It makes sense. You're a twin. You shared a womb with another body. Um. Over the last few weeks, I've been trying to pinpoint things that cause me um, quick rage and rage that I cannot like easily come back down from. Hmm. What do I need to say to you too? And I realized one of the things, one of the things that really like will put me in an, like, I mean, a rage is if I cook for you and you don't eat it while it's hot. If you even wait, if I say, hey, dinner is ready and you don't come running to the table, it will put me in a rage that will cause maybe like at least a week of not speaking. Because it's like the wasted time. You're like, I because spend I think all this time I cook it. with so much like love in my heart, and I put so much like thought behind it. And when someone's like, "Yeah, I'll be there. Let me just finish this thing," and then thirty minutes later they eat that thing, it nothing like ruins my day more. And that is really annoying to me. I don't have rage, but it pisses me off. Can, yeah, that's interesting. Can you express that to people so they know like... But then also, if people have something to do, if I'm cooking for someone, it shouldn't really be on my schedule. I recognize now that I'm not necessarily right. I'm not right for feeling this rage. I should I be patient, but it's just like, you're not going to eat it at its optimal like I'm it, searching for something I can relate to in this. I well, will well, never be cooking for anyone. I <laughs> I'm searching. We I know what this but is do, about though. When someone cooks for you though, Annie, um, do you come to the table right away? You're like, no, I'll be there in like 30 minutes. Yeah, no, I wouldn't do that. It's putting effort into something and doing something sweet and then feeling a little disrespected. Right. I yeah, think yeah, that's yeah. what I feel. I think it's different for Kalila. I think it's that she is a perfectionist and an overachiever and that's how she was trained to be. And so if the person is not experiencing the food at the, at best, the best possible time, yes, time that's exactly then it. she's not going to be perceived as the best that she did. Right. They're going to judge me based on what the food tastes like when it's no longer optimal, at the optimal temperature. And then you're going to be like, oh, it was okay versus, well, if you had eaten it 10 minutes prior. And you can't microwave it. It's not the same. Yeah, it's, it's not, not the same. same. You would have, have a gold medal. Um, sugarfish? This is, like, you know what this is an perfect. argument for? This is an argument for talking with your mouth full. Because I will be talking, <laughs> but I'll also be eating. And I don't care if you think that's rude. Yeah, because it's actually more rude to her for me. And I can't, it's rude to me to stop talking. So you're saying no matter what you're doing. My you mouth is eat. moving so food can go in. <laughs> No, I, I, I think whoever came up with a don't talk when your mouth is full is like, who the fuck cares? You know what because it is? As long parents choking, that don't want to hear you. It's parents that want just a break from you speaking. <laughs> is that what They're it is? They're just going, shut the fuck up for I, fucking one second. No, I think it's there's this whole crew of people who have manners, like wasps and stuff that we just are, none Guys, of us are I have been to. hanging out with some wealthy people, like wealthy, like people that were like born in wealth that aren't in our weird business. It's different. I'm trying to vibe high, but it's... Do they have... Their breath is better? It's not a breath thing. It's like there's a politeness that I'm not... I'm trying to fake and I don't... I'm not comfortable in it. It's just... There's just a level and they are bewildered by me. Are, how old are they? Because like my dad was very hardcore into manners because he was born in 1924 and he was born into a very like old money, like affluent it's European old money. It's old family, money. right? So my dad was very... Like, I the one thing he hated is, to this day, I will still eat with one leg up like this. And it used to drive him crazy. But I used to stand my ground and I say, well, I want to be comfortable when I eat. So I'm going to. And my dad never let go of all of his, like, etiquette values. And I do think, like, he was just 
cut from like a different cloth in that way because he was like forced to like learn some level of like etiquette. Yeah. But, I think there's people who don't want you to chew with your mouth open. It's just none of us. And it makes that makes complete sense to me. Right, there's people politeness. that want us to not chew on the mic. It's like, you know, yeah. like my this, <laughs> what I'm doing I like for a living is my dad's like absolute nightmare. Why? Because when we had to leave the table to go to the bathroom, I told you guys this. He what we would have to say is you cannot say I'm going number two. I got to go to the bathroom. You would say, may I pick up some flowers? Like that was the code. We would speak in code because it was impolite to say, I got to go take a shit. Like he was that guy. Your upbringing, it just always, it's like a board game. And you just, it always twists and turns. It's always risk. And it's scary. And it's confusing. Like I don't know how you, I don't know how you got from point A to point B. I don't know either. And I think that's why I am somebody who lives in maternity outfits, even though I'm not pregnant. I am so sloppy. I like not being, I I like not brushing my hair. And it's because my dad had that very like rigid idea of like, he was always Now you're saying a white female like her. I know. That's totally what I relate to because my mom was like super clean, like everything perfect. And that's why my like people, my friends come over like, Esther, that's why you're a slob is because your mom made everything perfect, everything with the coaster, whatever. And I remember I went to our friend Jenna's house in college and I saw she had a wall in her bedroom that her mom let all of anyone she wanted draw. All, so this wall is covered in like writing. And I, I just, my jaw was on the floor. Like I loved those rooms, the people with the chalkboard walls. It was, it was just, no, it was painted wall oh, and who people had, could draw. Who so paid fun. for her deposit? No, I, I I think they own their house. Oh, okay. But Oof. I, Oof. like, I, you don't understand. I was not allowed to, if there was a thumbprint on a wall in my house, it was like, we tell you not to touch the walls. Like, it was, it was a huge deal. And so. The littlest thumbprint. What a little <laughs> thumbprint that was. It's so low to the ground. Too. Like, Who's even going to see it? The purity and the cleanliness that was required of me has definitely swung me in. And you were just such a little stinker. Do you guys know how that. to set the table? What? Yes. I don't know. I was a waitress. I, no I still don't know which way the no, fucking, which side the fork's on. I know how to set the table, but in like, I think the Filipino version because we eat with a spoon on the right hand and a fork on the left. I have to Google it every time. It's no. Really I just think. You got to, you just. You get the utensils you need. It doesn't matter where they are. But I think I got a little bit of both, right? So like, because my mom is OCD, but I got the shower three times a day part. Like the, so I'm, I, I appear sloppy, but I'm so, so, so weird about like my mouth and like the hygiene. Also because we're like it's sweaty. Crazy. We have to make sure we don't smell. Yes, them. I am always yeah. very, very sweaty. I'm sweating right now. Jesus Christ. I'm always sweating. Oh, after I did the timeline therapy. Mm-hmm. My sweat was down to my waist. Yeah. Are you serious? Yeah, it was down to my waist. So and it was one hour. This was like a big deal. Yeah. This like shit came up. And we up. haven't done that part yet. So I'm like. EMDR is really crazy. My uh, my sister-in-law does it down in South Florida. Two people or she gets it done? No, she she is a practitioner. Oh, yeah. okay, so she she does it in South Florida. And I mean, it's like, it, it's a it's gnarly. Like it is. I commend you for doing that. I'm excited. Yeah. I think my my first EMDR session, I hardly said a word. I had an initial like burst of memories. And then I was like too terrified to speak like for the rest of the time. Right. And she was like, mm, try this again next time. Is EMDR when you hold the buzzers? Yeah, you have different options. You can hold the buzzers. You can, there's multiple ways, but there's always some like bilateral like stimulation because it connects it to after parts midnight. of your brain. It's what? It's hosted by Taylor Thomason. (laughs) Are you doing that? I don't know. You should do that to promote your movie. Wait, I don't get the joke though. Because it's like a buzzer show. Oh. It's just like, (laughs) like, I was raped. Bing. Make sure you have just one hand on the buzzer. No. um, Yeah, I have no clue what to. I had had this thought when I was about 40 feet underwater. that was really maybe people have like thought about this and maybe they've said it time and time again. But I really had this like very deep like rage, another thing I was rageful about, about the fact that, you know, when you were growing up, when boys would shame you for 
being like roast beefy or your lips would hang too low or they would like always mention and they would talk amongst each other about like the look of our vagina. Yeah. Uh-huh. Wait, Annie, what's the Ozempic update? It's been like a couple months now. Are we still going? I'm I'm just, I don't know. I'm Ozempic's best candidate. I love it. I'm, I lost 15 pounds. No side effects? No side effects except joy, happiness clear mind. And how often do you get it? I do it. I administer it myself once a week. But I took a week off um, because I was doing ayahuasca and I was fine. Like, I think I could go off a bit. I think it did help me with my patterns and stuff. Like, they're like, you have to stand up forever. I'm like, not me. Is there like an energy change or a shift or are you still like, do you want to work out? Yeah, it's like so easy to work out. I don't know what anyone's like. It's just I'm like, am I on a placebo or something? I don't know, <laughs> because I'm just having the great. And it's like, I just feel great. I don't feel any. There's no negative side effect. I'm hungry. I just don't overeat. So it's I just, just eat like if you were just like a normal person without like a disorder. So you just Not that I have like that much of a disorder, but I just, you know, I don't have like the emotional connection to food. It's just I just eat it. I enjoy it. It's so easy. Because you and I have that share that same problem where it's like we don't eat for to get full. Right. We eat like past full. Right. We eat oh, for yeah. taste. You and think so, you're the only ones who has that issue? Come on. Yeah. So we definitely. I know you've like, really oh, gained a bunch. <laughs> <laughs> so that, does it just help you stop when you're? Can I touch satiated? your stomach. Yeah. Esther. But like, it, does touching it do anything for you? Like, are it's you? It's so like smooth and cute. It's like firm, right? That's like yeah. what's different. This is the firmest my stomach has it's ever like, been. Just to feel like <laughs> something around like that is are like you so cute. Kicks yet? Yeah. Are there I feel movement. Yeah, it's not really kicks. It's just like she'll just randomly be like, the. I'm like, okay, but yeah, I love feeling movement. It's my favorite thing. They say be kind to your mother. She's the only one that felt your heartbeat inside her. Like you, and yet I'm still a huge bitch to my mom. As well, <laughs> you know we're the meanest to the people we love the most. Yeah, Our, yeah, I know. It's like that thing where you're like, you, I can talk shit to my mom, but you can't. I will say there was a huge shift the last ten days. I'm 30 weeks right now, and I would say around 28, 29 weeks. The hunger, which you guys will relate to, has become binge eating disorder level. It's okay, ravenous, and it's the and it's the one time it's truly okay thank you for saying that it does make me feel sick a little bit but it is like that panic hunger where i'm like what is in the like what's in the kitchen and i'm sitting yeah. them like grabbing things that i haven't thought about and that are expired you know like it is a hunger i just have not experienced in so long and, and you does... said you ate shrimp for the first time yes i had shri- that was my first like weird pregnancy craving was i this just this kid has taste <laughs> This it's kid has Dave. taste. There's so like there's so much of Dave. Oh, that's so funny. Because Dave is such a seafood guy. Like I've never really had shrimp. I which I know is weird, but then like I was thinking about it. Did it feel like cannibalism? <laughs> <laughs> did it feel too close? I did. It was, <laughs> You're like it felt very threatening. It Sometimes wasn't were you scared of the shrimp might actually eat you? <laughs> come back at me. <laughs> <laughs> we have little shrimp. Todd got a new fish tank and he got these little shrimp. Wait, I would love to see that what that looks like. Send She's going to drink the whole tank, Annie. <laughs> <laughs> Kill all your babies. They're so little, though. They're like little babies. Really? Yeah, he got all these little tiny fish. They're Do so Do they cute. get big? They're not going to get big. We just have a bunch of little tiny fish. Oh, see, wait. They're really cute. I didn't know you had fish, too. We have everything. This is great. I have a zoo. <laughs> I'm an animal handler. I'm going to start charging and bring yeah, them on Yeah, I was going to say, shows. when my baby's born, can we get a membership to your zoo? Guys, I, when I was, when I did, used to do Chelsea Handler show, they had like the list of the guests because they would do shoot two di- shows a day. And so they had the list of the guests for the next one and it said Animal Handler. And I thought she had a brother named Animal. And I was like, that's so <laughs> weird. She had a brother named Animal. No, I'm like, I want to like teach kids that snakes are cool and not scary. I, I like have a whole new. This is a TikTok series. I, I love, I just like love. This is what I love about Todd. He like, he just has all these hobbies that aren't things that I would naturally be inclined to. And then so I like, I'm just like learning all these new things are just now in my world. And it's so fun. And I'm like, like we will watch these like YouTubes of these people, these reptile people. And then I'm like DMing the what? And like, I'm like, girling out with like these like reptile girls the reptile wives like, the real yes. reptile wives of los angeles <laughs> gianna what's up my girl she's so cute i have to dm her because she has these like um 
on the vlog I saw today, she was wearing these um, sweatpants that are like hunter print. You know, where it's like leaves yes. and stuff. I'm like, oh, I need hunter Those sweatpants. Those are very like, cool right now. Are your fucking, where there's some, and she would like, when I posted my skims that, um, the brown skims outfit I got, she was like, oh my God, I was just going to get it. I was like, get it, bitch. It's just like so cute. It's so fun. Did I tell you how an ex retaliated by eating my pet fish? What? I don't like that. <laughs> the, well, it's the same like guy. That. It's the same roast beef guy, actually. When we Is broke up. in prison? Like, what's going what on? No, he's a I really don't successful guy. How every week there's some new horrifying thing. It, <laughs> and she's like, Did I tell you? And we, <laughs> I'm pretty and sure. And we I think she did. We go, She's like, Did I tell you? And we're like, Probably. Yeah. But, and then but, it's never. <laughs> I miss the tooth fairy guy that would just knock your teeth out and steal your teeth. Oh, yeah. He'd punch yeah. it from in. <laughs> I like the guy that would punch into the. Hey, she had a boyfriend, boyfriend that would go. He would punch in. He would yeah, because he would like, stop. <laughs> my, I, <laughs> the head of my bed was facing my window. And I think I forgot to call him one night. This was in high school. And so he like opened my window and then like woke me up with a punch. Punched through. Yeah. Punched what down. We should do fish. like a where are they now with those guys. Uh, should he's we? not in a good place. No. Yeah. We, we, I, I had to uh, keep tabs on him because I think uh, he's actually very unsafe. As Can you adult. tell I've been hanging out with wealthy people? Because I'm like, I have to like undo it. <laughs> you do look extra slouchy today. I have yeah. to undo it. Well, I also realized I went up with a bunch of my girlfriends to Santa Fe. My like um, hallucinogen girls. And we rented this like big house. And it was so like, Santa Fe is my fucking spot. I fucking love Santa Fe. That's where I'm going to go like write all my shit, you know? We just rented this fucking mansion. I'm with a bunch of like badass like... It was like me, a bunch of pe like women, basically most of them in their 50s, just like inspiring, cool bitches. I noticed they were taking pictures and um, every picture I was like, my posture was done like this and I never noticed. And I was like, oh, I did that. I've created that because when I was a kid, my parents said that I, when I was born, I had the best posture of any baby. And they did this whole photo shoot of me in like gymnastics gear and stuff because I they were like we just used to laugh about how you just had the best posture and then it's a learned behavior I like dimmed my light physically yeah, I like you, started like yeah. it's slouching. called um armoring yeah and yeah so people, now I'm like I'm back I thought it was just because like the Mary Kate Olsen 2000s era we were all doing that she they was younger, armoring too no armoring is a real thing it's probably why we all have TMJ because if you've like sustained any kind of like difficulty yeah. or trauma when you're younger, like your first physical instinct is to armor up. So to hunch over and pull your shoulders yeah, up. I think I, that's why I think I notice in traffic, like if I'm late, I like this one shoulder goes up. So this is like my like. Yeah. But I also I was doing a hypnosis, a session of hypnosis, and we got to that I have this story about. When I was in utero, I took all my brother's like nutrients because he was like, no offense, a shrimp. Um, and I was like, I came out just like pounds bigger than him. So I. That's crazy. Pounds bigger. I was way crazy. bigger than him. And then uh, and then growing up bigger than him until like 10th grade or something. And then everybody thought me and my older brother were the twins. And then. Um, so you felt like shamed. About so I that. felt like I took too much. So then I'm always like over giving. It's like I feel like guilty that I like that I'm that I have things. And so I'm like, I'll just give it to other people and I'll just like. And then so then I was flying back from. I can't remember where the uh, maybe it was Santa Fe. And I was like in first class. So there's just two seats. So it's like this guy sitting next to me in the um, I'm in the window. And I realize like it's even like to the point where like I won't pee if I have to pee. Like I just won't do anything that's like even to bodily functions. I won't do anything that's going to like upset people. Are you serious? Yeah. And so and so I'm sitting on the plane and I'm holding my piss in. And it's like there's so many more hours left. And I'm like, oh, the guy's sleeping. I don't want to wake him up. And then I was like, you know what? He chose leg room over fucking being able to sleep through this. I have to fucking pee. It doesn't matter. Who is this? This is a stranger. So I woke him up. I peed. He peed after me. It was fine. There was nothing like I probably saved us both from a UTI. But it's like there's so many times in my life where I like I do that. I put I will put like over my physical needs. This is shocking to me. I hate this. I hate that like, that, like, I'm glad that you're seeing it and making change because the fact that you would sit there in a fucking first class ticket that you paid way too much money for, I don't know, because it's very expensive and like be suffering. You gotta rise up, bitch. It's because I'm an aisle girly and I know. 
Yeah. I will I get up for anybody. That's my yeah. choice. You're right. I chose the aisle. I will get up. Yeah. It's that like if I'm asleep, you wake me up. That's my duty. Esther, that flight we were on is really one of the funniest experiences of my life. There were two were there two flights or was that the same flight? Did we fly twice together? I don't know. I don't know. I might be confusing when I sat next to Esther Steinberg. <laughs> Just because we're the same. I'm over. Name, I'm over. We don't even look I'm alike. Next- Wait, can I ask a question first? Did yes. you guys get voted anything in high school? Yeah. Um, Did you? They the my high school was obviously like not a real high school. <laughs> I got voted hottest, tightest puss <laughs> by the teachers. <laughs> by the um, teachers. <laughs> yeah. No, but um, in middle school, I remember being like so annoyed because they they just said most like the Olsen twins because I had a twin brother. Oh, that's such a and good I, one, though. Is it, though? Did I was everybody like, everybody get one, Annie? Is yeah. Is that why? Yeah. Mm. That's lame. I and I was like, that's not a good enough I mean, I Todd love was Olsen class clown. What was yours? Uh, okay, so I know <laughs> that I would have gotten most changed since freshman year, but it went to the building because we had a lot of construction. What? So I'm really... <laughs> <laughs> what? Wait, what? <laughs> this actually... I ex- could not. It's like, I... I manifested that now for that <laughs> for you to get chosen over by a I building, lost to the building. So wait a second this really explains who you are <laughs> as a person and everything about you i was supposed to get most changed everyone said they voted for me but also like the fact that you're like competitive with the building is very sad <laughs> it's very sad it's very, sad. It's it. very <laughs> sad and i did get a different one this is why you have a movie this is but why I you had the, still... the you had the power in your heart to make a movie because you're trying to out China <laughs> building. Wait, was the building on the ballot? Like, could people vote for the building? No, or you? I think people wrote it in, or the the people who made the fucking newspaper at our school were being cool and funny. I will. The building it's did change funny. a lot. The we had construction our whole four years. I will say that. What'd you get a boob job? What was your big change, Vex? You get. You, I was just like two centimeters tall. No, I just I started out. I mean, you guys know this. I started my freshman year with a lesbian sex tape. The football team stole it. I was like you know, just drama. And then, well, I guess that's the wrong choice of word because then by the end of high school, I was like very serious in the theater program and I was just not in touch with like the cool kids anymore. I but- would rather be talking to a building right now <laughs> than hear you brag about your fucking- You fucking asked me. But it's so bad. You it's not me. what I thought. It's not what I thought. You made me humiliate myself. Are you it's, happy? That was you. You did that. You were like, I was so serious about theater. I'm- I'd but, rather talk to a beautiful brick wall. But I did get voted most likely to have a talent agent, which I'm like, they got that right. They got that right. Hey. Thank you. And but I still am upset about most changed because I know that it would have been me. I got I got in in swimming, I got most improved. In when swimming, I, was like I had a note that allowed me to not go in the pool. <laughs> you were like, I have a sex tape. I can't go in. <laughs> they can't see my body again. <laughs> It'll be too traumatic for everyone. Did you get any? I don't remember having, I think I recently reached out to a friend. I'm like, hey, like, can you send me a yearbook from any of the years I was in high school? Because similar to yours, like, I just don't feel like I had a real high school My high school was, my my yearbook was stapled together, okay? There were 17 kids in my graduate class. The girl running the thing was my friend of me. So she was, it was like, I was like in one little spot. And then she was like on every fucking page. It was like. It's all about the committee. It's all it about was the year. So I, I hate that. I hate the committee. I think that. But um, what a loser. The committee never likes girls like us. They never, the committee, they're not looking out for us. It's so funny, yeah. like, that you got compared to a building and we look like buildings. <laughs> we have the shoulder structure of an actual skyscraper. Um, I'm actually really triggered by you guys. You're like a hut. I'm really competitive with you, you guys. You were like a little hut. You were like a little tent. You were a little teepee. <laughs> Esther, that building is probably decrepit now, and look at you, okay? It's a I'm really nice high you. school. I won't talk shit about oh, it. I was going to say, is, it's there, so is it dark still around? how much you I'd like your high school. It. It's, it's across the street from Old Orchard Mall, like it's referenced just in Mean Girls. The way it's you, wonderful. I, I've been back since. It's really is, hard when they make weird. me sign in and show my ID, and I don't just walk in. But, uh, um, yeah. I High school was, I peaked in high school. I, that's in, a, in me- mentally. I did. Anyways. I took a, a steep fall in high school, but 
But my sister and I were swimmers. We were athletes for a school that hardly even had a a swim team because we went to Blair High School. And so when my sister and I initially wanted to go to La Cañada because they had like a legitimate like high school like swim program. We also swam club outside of that. But they found out that we were... um, we faked our address to go to La Cañada. So we they found out about that. And then we ended up getting zoned to Blair High School that didn't really have a swim team. And here were two immigrant girls who they realized like, oh my God, like With these those girls. shoulders, they're like, we can make a team. <laughs> <laughs> and so, yeah, my sister won CIF, which is like California like state championships. Like I, I won league every single year. And um, we never really got like recognition from the school because they just didn't have the budget or the money because it was like a really shitty school. But like, but um, I, we never even got like an announcement, no, nothing from them. But it's just because they didn't have like their resources for it, right? So my sister and I were just known as like the swimmers. That's like, uh, occasionally I, you know, I, I sucked weight couple more dicks than I should have so and I was either the swimmer or like the, the or face the swallower. queen yeah I was swallower <laughs> but that's that's about it I don't think I ended up on the yearbook like at all maybe I, except for the swimming stuff look at Let's you now in your shitty sweatpants but you know can I tell you what hurts is that I am on the Blair High School list of um notable like um whatever like but you know when you click my name, it's Bobby's picture that shows oh. up. <laughs> Unbelievable. I'm writing a letter. That's funny. Come on. It is funny. <laughs> it's it's hilarious. Hilarious. <laughs> so sad okay, and I funny. Think that you right. became Bobby Lee. What a treat it has been. We and love you guys. We love you guys. And we're two weeks away from our live show, so you can get tickets at the link below. Come see us in Los Angeles, February 13th. Um, we you better get them. It's, got, it's probably sold out by now, so you better go check now. And mm-hmm. we'll see you guys next week with a brand new episode. Mm-hmm.